Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Love's Gas Station in my F-150, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Kana, New York's gas station. Yes, we have a gas station. And yes, we are live, live here with Lori Pag and the Chief, Catherine A., and from Rhode Island, Sarah. You're, they're all in the car with you in the truck? They're all in the car with me. The three girls are inside uh, getting beverages. Okay. I'm here with the chief right now. Caffeinated beverages? Uh, I don't know. It's mushroom coffee. They sell it. They don't. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> I think it's an herbal mix. We once had a, a podcast uh, episode entitled, This Podcast Does Not Support Dunkin' Donuts or something. Do you remember that? Our first I don't remember that. Sometimes I don't look at the names. We That's did, funny though. Why was Dunkin' Donuts in the background? And I, I don't know why. Uh, we could go back and find out why we said that. But well, I've done the podcast from here many times. Yeah. Because it. Oh, oh. And the reason why I'm here because we have the most beautiful, out of control, scary thunderstorm, lightning storm. It was like a light lightning storm like I've never seen before. It was like pitch black and then bright as day and then pitch black and then as bright wow. as day. And it went on. It just went on. I had to like wake up and wake up my kid and just like, let's just watch this. And it was sort of scary. But um, yeah, Bobby Marchand's house got hit and it blew up a water pipe in her Whoa. house and for the whole town of Kinderhook. So we had a her house night. got hit. Her house got hit by lightning. Yep. Wow. Everyone's yeah. OK. Everyone's okay. Frankie. But it was scary. Frankie's okay. You know the saddest part about that storm, Ragnar? Uh, what? That that it knocked over your wall. Man, I thought that thing was going to last forever. And uh, Very funny. <laughs> that wall is beautiful. And okay. I put the finishing touches on it You yesterday. probably went and took a look at it in the morning. I'm going like, to post pictures. Everybody there? check my Instagram, and I want everybody to comment on my wall. <laughs> You're sure it's still there? Yeah. It wasn't the chief, damaged? The chief, who's very talented mm -hmm. at things like that, you know, construction and building. He built it right. The chief was, he said he, he was impressed with he my said wall. Nothing's going to knock down that wall. Nothing can. It's eternal, practically. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's keep it moving, Raghunath. Let's keep things okay. moving. Uh, did you come prepared with announcements for today? Well, Miss Mara told me an announcement before I left. What was it? Okay. <laughs> this is two days without Mara. We're going to have to play the two days without back Mara. This is, all, this is a streak. She's bringing my son to school today. Um, she said, make sure you announce, make sure you announce, <laughs> make sure you announce. Yeah. Jiva G. Yoga class today. Jiva G's new podcast. Jiva G's new podcast, perhaps. We want everybody to check out. I got interviewed for Jiva G's podcast yesterday. It's not live, so you'll hear it somewhere down the line, but it's a great podcast. I love it. <laughs> you know, another guy over here is the actual one that was interviewed on the podcast. Because yes, Tuba was <laughs> interviewed Hello. for the first one. Yes, he was. <laughs> okay. My point, my point I'm saying yeah. is this, that everybody yeah. should go to Apple Podcasts, dig it up, uh, give it a five-star review, say something about it. It helps her algorithms. Okay. We want this thing to blow up. 
Um, we do have an Atlanta program that I'm going to be in Atlanta for all you Atlanta people when? on 922. That's September 22nd. Okay. And then I'm going to be in um, Nashville a couple of days before that on the on the 20th, I think it is. OK. Um, also, for Patreon members, there's the Cult of Cain is happening. Uh, Josh Cain's yoga class. It's a thing. People go to it. Um, and he's empowered. Gandiva Yoga. So when will that be? When is that going to happen? 1030 says, today. 1030 today. OK, thank you. Uh, yep. OK, That's ready. What I got for announcements. Wisdom of the Sages retreat. That's happening uh, over Columbus Day weekend. Excited for that. We're going to bring a Kirtan extraordinaire in for that as well, too. We haven't figured out who. Okay. Let's see who's around. So why don't we get into the nugget, Roganath? Good nugget today. It's got a lot to do with me. Remember I said I lost my cool the other day. You got angry the other day. I got angry. It was an, you, you know what? I got a lot of compassion. I got a lot. So many people text messaged me or write me, wrote me on Instagram. They were just like, I'm sorry. It's hard with exes. You know, I, I've really tried to make this a thing where if if I get an angry text message from an ex or from anybody, I have one ex. It, 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 I made it sound like I had many exes. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I get an angry text message from an ex or something like that or something. Uh, well, I don't respond. I just don't respond because it doesn't help anything. You know, sometimes I, not responding is a problem too. I don't think you could just. Yeah, yeah. This is the ostrich way of dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> just don't respond. Sometimes you have to respond. Well, um, sometimes you don't, and I've okay. been just not respond because if I respond, it's also going to be heated, and kind of. I, I well, guess maybe your point is you don't have to respond in a heated way, but I. So and I do that. No, I've been I've been really, really for the last couple of years been trying to do it like that. And I gave into this and I tell you, I felt dirty. I felt like defiled. I felt impure. I yeah, that was interesting. Like, I remember you said that and I how it felt, made you feel. It made me feel degraded. Like I've done like, like I've, I've just slept with a prostitute or something, something, you know, something like horrible. I've done something horrible, mm. you know, and it was, it's no good. Hating is not good. And, Lashing out and trying to crush people is not a good thing. You know what uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin said about anger? Matt? Benjamin Franklin, he was a wise man. What did he say? He said, whatever is begun in anger ends in shame. Whatever. Oh, what? That's yeah. exactly how I felt, Ben. That's why I brought it up. Now I'm thinking like, Ben, I didn't even read that. We just came to the same conclusion. Now regarding uh, not, you, you said like, just don't respond. But yeah. the fact is that sometimes we have to respond. What do you think about that? Well, rather than not respond entirely, uh, here's Ralph Waldo Emerson's advice. Oh no, that not not You are a you are a big bag of nuggets today. So oh, I got tons of anger nuggets here, I'm gonna Yeah, but, I just um, I've got tons of anger. Good. Let's, okay, let's so, hang out together. Actually it wasn't it wasn't the the Ralph oh here it is. Thomas Jefferson actually. When when angry, remember this one, Raghunath. When angry, I'll remember this when I'm angry. That's, when like, ang that's like saying, when bit by a snake, make sure you <laughs> bring the snake to the, do to, to the doctor's office. So you this is easier. Okay. When angry, count to 10 before you speak. If very angry, count to 100. That was Thomas Jefferson. Okay, we can replace that with the Maha Mantra. Like chant one that's mantra. Before they, if not before chant Lord sixteen Ch rounds before you. That's respond. before Lord Chaitanya's teaching came to the new world. Right. Okay, but I want you to read the nugget that that I gave you, which was from uh, Mark Twain. Mark Twain. You know what was great about Mark Twain? He went to India in the old days. He appreciated India. I know he really appreciated India, and I just like I dream of being in India. 100 years ago, 200 years ago. It'd be very cool to check that out. This would be so cool. Go to the I same temples old... that we've been to that are still there today. You go yes, back then. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yes, wouldn't that be great? Going to Mata <laughs> Mohan back then or Govindaji. Govindaji, you know. Oh, man. God. Anger is an acid. This is Mark Twain. Anger is an acid. Not like a healthy amino acid either. No, it's not a healthy amino acid. <laughs> 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 anger is an acid and not like a drug either. Digestive anger is an acid. acid. 
that can do more harm to the vessel in which it is stored than to anything on which it is poured. As it, was, it rhymed. Read yeah, it again. It was very good. Um, Kostuba. Anger is an acid that can do more harm to the vessel in which it is stored than to anything on which it's poured. Okay. What do you think of that? Well, that's similar to sometimes Buddha is accredited to saying, I, I, I really wonder, uh, but that, you know, it's like anger is like a hot coal, right? Yes. And it's, you, you want to throw coal. it at someone else, but it's really burning you up. Yeah. But you know what, as, as I was, um, I, I, you know, anger relates to what we're reading now in Bhagavatam because it's, it's, um, well, the Pratchets has got angry. The Pratchets has got angry. Doing all that tapas. They did all that. You know, uh, yeah, tapas, austerity. And, and, and tapas is a good. Tapas is a good thing. Tapas means like a renunciation, austerity. And you hear like yogis go to the forest, or they bathe in the freezing cold water, or they fast for many days. There are some positive benefits that help you control your mind, control your senses, detach yourself from the body. Yeah. But in bhakti, we say, got to keep the heart soft. That's right. If all the tapas makes you hardened, not good. Then it can also make you proud, right? Yeah, it can. Like and sometimes I'll do a long fast, like yeah. 21 days, and I'll be like, oh, I fasted for 21. You know, I do it with a little bit of it. Maybe a little bit of go. I'm saying. A little bit, maybe. Probably, maybe. You did that long fast one time where you didn't eat or drink for a long time. I know, man. I was. <laughs> That's crazy. You know, it was good for me. It was good for okay. me. Okay. Remember you, you come I, out I angry? Remember, <laughs> I remember going on the show and you were like, man, your whole head is shrunk. <laughs> yeah. We could find the podcast. Okay, but I, you know, as I was going through all these um things about it, I wanted to tie in with the anger theme. So I was looking at quotes about anger. And you know, it became even more apparent that across the world's spiritual traditions, um, wisdom traditions, everybody understands. You know, that anger is, one, it's a destructive force. Two, it brings pain to the person that bears anger. And three, that it presounds, it, it, it clouds um, one's perception of truth, how, how well you can understand things. Or, or for like a more meditative kind of spirit, it, spiritual person, it, may, it clouds your perception of God. And so it's like all these traditions recommend or recognize you know, that a fundamental step in spiritual life is getting control of anger. Or you could say freeing ourselves from the control of anger. Right? I screwed up. I forgot. To, we do, we all do it. We all not do here. It. No, not, no, I screwed up somewhere else. Oh, <laughs> Maris not here. No one could get into the waiting room. That's why no one was here. I just oh, let right in 50 enough. more people. Okay. And that means you also didn't listen to a word I just said. So I'll say it again. No, no, because all these people are writing. We can't get in the message I've, board. I see. It was some some de 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 deep information about with okay. about anger. Well, that it's that across the world spiritual tradition. Are you paying attention to me now? What are you doing now? <laughs> Turn off the heat in the car, okay. burning up. <laughs> okay, you ready? Can okay. we talk now? Ready. Hit Look me. at me, man. So that across the world spiritual spiritual traditions, there's they all kind of recognize anger is destructive. Right. right anger it, it it causes pain it not only to everyone that you're angry at but to the person that has the anger it causes pain you know it, yeah. it it causes it's a cause of suffering and that it clouds one's perception you can't see clearly um what to what to what to speak of like deep spiritual vision or deep spiritual perception you know forget right. about it so so it's fundamental in spiritual life to get control of anger, or as I mentioned earlier, or to become free of the control of anger. Either get, con however you want to phrase it, right? Get control of anger or become right. free from the control of, of anger controlling you. But I looked up in the bug, I did a little experiment, Raghunath. Tell me. I checked to see how many times anger is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, Krodha. You, you're interesting, man. You do stuff like that? I just did. You're one of those people that does stuff like that. I, and I, 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 I don't I know how often I do stuff like that, that, but I did it. I did it. I would never do something like that. Okay, go how, on. How many times do you think Bug of, uh, anger is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita's 700 verses? Um, 15. No, no, no. 20. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got a sudden burst of uh, <laughs> spiritual download. Go. Tell me. 20 times. Uh, not that many. 
Oh, really? Uh, ten, ten. It's mentioned 14 times. Oh, okay. That's a lot. Yeah, because anger is one of these hindrances to evolution. Yeah. And now, now let me ask you, I'm going to quiz you, a hot seat. We haven't done hot seat in a long time. We're supposed to hot seat Mara. You're not supposed to hot seat me. <laughs> that originally it was you. That we were, or you would hot seat me. Oh, well, yeah. I'm hot seeing you right now. What chapter in the Bhagavad Gita has mentions anger the most? Oh, I got you. Think, think. Krodha Bhavati Samoha Smirti Bhrivimra. That's a second chapter. Second chapter is um, tied for second. You are like the insights on Instagram, you know? But which it's, one is number one? Uh, it's got to be one of the earlier chapters. Does it? Does it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Chapter 16. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Right? The, yeah. the, which describes the divine, the, the divine and the demoniac. Actually, one of, once every mention of it uses the word crota. Uh, well, in any case, that's what I was looking I even up. You quoted that verse. Well, you quoted one from the second chapter. You used oh, the word "crota." From the sixteenth chapter. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um. But uh, one when it's talking about the divine nature in the sixteenth chapter, it says "a crota," right? Like unangry, <laughs> non angry. A crota. Right? Okay. But but really, when it's de- when when it's described within that chapter, chapter sixteen, which only has twenty four verses. Yeah. Which is a relatively small chapter, yeah. one of the smallest chapters, shortest chapters in the Bhagavad Gita, 24 verses. It's mentioned one, two, three, four, five times out of the 24 verses right. when it's describing the demoniac nature, what it yep. means to be really a downright, downright dirty anti love person, <laughs> right? Like an anti devotion yep. person. Anger is manifest in the character of that person. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a big part of Bhagavad Gita, you know, anger. it's a big part of our practice. We need, if we are, if it is our determination to become deeply spiritual, to become deeply devotional, to become deeply loving, then we have to deal with, it's not something that we can, it's something that you got to think about and address, you know? Yeah. It's gotta be regulated. It's got to, yeah. And I'm not saying you can't be anger, a- angry, it's got to work for you instead of you working for anger. Yeah, and and in general, I there hope, shouldn't I be hope too Lori much. Lori Pag's taking notes here. You got the giveaway, <laughs> the takeaways today, Lori Pag. Don't drop the ball on this. You know, it's like sort of like even in, in a spiritual way, as a parent, as a friend, as a protector, you can evoke anger. That's okay, but you have to be able to evoke like a weapon, like the, like in the Mahabharat. You evoke the weapon and then you call the weapon back. You don't let the weapon take control of you. Mm. Huh? Like there that? you go. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's not, the, we don't hear that anger is entirely rejected. Yeah. But you, it can't control you. And, and for one, it's not controlling. It's not like they're angry that often, right? Yeah. But it's interesting that right before the battle where you want to, like, Krishna could have been saying, like, think about what they did to Draupadi. Think about what they did to your brothers. Think about what, you know, like, he could have been trying to make him angry. Right. And really, he was just speaking anti-anger like the whole time, mm-hmm. you know. Um, okay, any, but, you any know, other it, good anger quotes. Well, why don't we just do this one because it's From such your a big bag of nuggets, Santa Claus. It, it's such an essential <laughs> verse that really describes what we're trying to become. What are we trying to become? Sage of steady mind, right? So, um, in the second chapter, um, beautiful verse. Um, one who is the, here, here's here here. Here's just like a nice verse that just lays out if we want to be able to deeply meditate on the holy names, if we want to be able to deeply meditate on Krishna's form and his pastimes and become purified, you know. Think about this. One who is not disturbed in mind, mm-hmm. even amidst the threefold miseries, all right. three. All three. Or elated when there is happiness. Hooray. Right? They have, oh, and look, up, down, up, down. <laughs> Uh, and who is free from and these three are mentioned several times in the Gita in in this order no attachment fear 
Will you just will you just hear me out? <laughs> Attachment. One who is not disturbed in mind, even amidst the threefold miseries, or elated when there's happiness, and who is free from attachment, fear, and anger. Stita dear Muni Uchite is called a, a sage of steady mind. That when Arjuna said, What is a deeply spiritual person? What do they look like? What are their qualities? Krishna breaks this out, right? The sage of steady mind, the Stita dear Muni, mm-hmm. right? All right. Something we got to consider. Yes. All yes. Right. You want me Very to read good. you some of the other nuggets about it? Yeah, I want to hear more nuggets from your nugget bag there, Santa Claus. Okay. Um, Ralph Waldo Lots Emerson. Lots of anger nuggets. Well, this is, this is a little clever one. A little. I can imagine from, you dressed from, as St. Nick right now. Forget that, and let's <laughs> focus on these nuggets. Yeah, pull them out of your bag. Ralph Waldo Plus. Emerson says that for every minute you remain angry, you give up 60 seconds of peace of mind. Okay, I could. <laughs> right. I'm not sure. That's clever. That I could have made that okay. one up. How about let's go back to Plato then? Okay, bring it up. Bring it up a notch. Oh, th- this is a great one. This is a great one. This this sounds like Plato would just be hanging with us. Like he's he would. I think Plato would. would be hanging with us. <laughs> I think he would Maybe be not too. with me, but like I think he'd be a devotee. <laughs> I think he would come around. He'd check out your wall. He wouldn't be too impressed, but he's like, well, this <laughs> man of fo- the future would, is. <laughs> would he follow me on Instagram? Oh my is God, this... Plato's following me. He's got a blue verified check. <laughs> he's, he, why is he so proud of this little wall? <laughs> oh, my stone I, wall you're talking about. I, I don't understand. Do, doesn't he understand what we've done in Greece? Here's his music, people, Plato. His, people his age have built coliseums. <laughs> here, <laughs> here, hear his music, Plato. What? This, this is music? What kind of disturbance is this? What kind of mind is creating this music? It's so sad that I'm proud of this wall <laughs> when people my age have built like the Hoover Dam. Probably younger than me. Oh, much younger. Agna. Much younger people than me have built the Hoover Find out who... Look up who built the Hoover Dam. I want to find out who built Well, I think Hoover it Dam. was a team. I think that was a I team. I think it was a team, that but one. there was one engineer who probably went right behind it, the Brooklyn Bridge. Okay. This Brooklyn Bridge was uh, Skirmer, no, was not Skirmerhorn. I think it was Havemeyer was involved in that one. Havemeyer. And his, I think he died as it was being built, and his son had to complete it. A lot of people died in building Robling the Bridge. Robling was involved in that, maybe, Greg is saying. Robles. Is it just saying Roland? I'm pretty sure that uh, Havemeyer was involved. In anyway, my point is, it's pathetic how <laughs> proud I am of my stone wall. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Plato might take a, a look at us and just walk away in disgust. Actually, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but here, here, here's what Plato said: There are two things a person should never be angry at. Okay. Any guesses? No, I can't. I mean, I can think of a lot, but they're way off. What they can change. I was going to say a bad movie, but there was no movies back then. What they can change and what they can't change. Well, they, don't be angry at what you can change because you should just change it. Yeah. And what you can't change. Why be angry? You're why wasting angry? You're wasting energy. There you That's go. That's great. And here okay. we go. The Hoover Dam was built by Henry J. Kaiser. At what time? He, they're not going to mention his age. He probably died before our age, <laughs> accomplished a lot more. No, they probably it. died before our age. <laughs> They've done things. They've created okay. things. Okay. Um, this is I'm from... at that age right now, because it's, it's a little sad. I'm at that age where people have done great things in the world. The, the Hoover Dam, it's more important to, to, to read Bhagavatam every day and share with people than to build a thousand Hoover Dams. Is it? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> is it? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Um, this is from Elizabeth Kenny. No idea who Elizabeth is. Okay. What'd she say about it? But anger? this is a good one. This one you could relate back to your the other day, Raghunath, when you got so upset. Okay. He who angers you conquers you. Uh, I'll never be conquered. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now a little something from, Pythag- from uh, Pythagoras. He was famous for the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Did you tell us the Pythagorean theorem? Yeah. No, hey, but I've heard hey. of it. Yeah, no, that's how you find the uh that's how you find the area um, not the area what the hypotenuse of the triangle the hypotenuse <laughs> nice I, I got news for you i got an a plus in geometry <laughs> okay i was i was into math i just can't remember any 
of it now. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's something from Pythagoras. Anger. Oh, this is similar to Ben Franklin's one. Anger begins with folly and ends with repentance. That's exactly what you went through the other day, right? Yeah. Well, it wasn't really folly. No, it was, of course it was folly. What does folly mean? It just means you, you acted foolishly. Or, you know. Oh, that's what folly means? I thought it was like playful. Let's, no. let's go out and folly around. Let me look up that's folly what... real quick. <laughs> Wow. We are on a mission from squirreldom. A lack of good sense, foolishness. Okay, yeah. Okay. I, I like Ben Franklin's better. Go on. Uh, I thought this was more good, goody nuggets. Uh, this is from Robert Green Ingersoll. Was that? Was that? Was he the one that did the the? He made the seagull. He made the Hoover Dam. Uh, John just Livingston just seagull. Going. You're squirreling too much. Bring it back. Pull it in. You just reel it in. I'm not the one that brought up the Hoover Dam. He <laughs> says, anger is a wind. Oh, this one's great, Raghunath. Anger is a wind which blows out the lamp of the mind. I think he could have said like the lamp intelligence. of intelligence, maybe. Yeah, but yeah, they didn't the have lamp the of your clarity intelligence of your, yeah. and mind. Yeah, your reasoning, let's say, right? Anger is a, sure. is a wind which blows out the lamp of your reasoning. Because anger is existing in the mind. So. Um, we look at it from a different, this is from Lawrence J. Peter. Don't explain who they are. Let's just speak. You took more time saying that I was already going right into it. Right. Speak when you are angry and you will make the best speech you'll ever regret. Ooh. <laughs> I did a little twist at the end, right? Yeah. That was I got you the, you're like, what? I was oh. like, what? What? I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> you're like, what? Good. Oh, Speak okay. When I get you're it. Angry. Speak now, when you're angry and you'll make the best speech you'll ever regret. Chant the Maha Mantra once. And if you're really angry, chant it one round. Okay. Um, this is from... I say some. I, I, uh, Raghunath says, sometimes wait a day. That's what Raghunath says. Yeah, put a little wait space a in there. A little time. Wait a day before you apply. This one is from Sidney J. Harris. Okay. If a small thing... Oh, this is a good one, Ragna. This is a good one. If a small thing has the power to make you angry, does that not indicate something about your size? Ooh. No. <laughs> you see that? You see that? I was bringing it back to making fun of short people. Okay. And finally, uh, from Frank Herbert. Uh, Frank Herbert says, how often is it that the angry man rages denial? Oh, no, no, let's read. How often is it that the angry man rages denial? denial? You could say rages in denial, right? Rages in denial makes sense. Let, we'll sense. put it that way. A little. He's saying maybe in a bit more po poetic way, but how often is it that the angry man rages in denial of what his inner self is telling him? Oh, no, that's got you thinking. You're like, is that me? Did I do that? <laughs> I yeah. see those, those, it's too early those gears. In the it's too early in the morning for me to think. <laughs> I think the gear. Never do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, that's a good one, though. You know, it, it's because it's hitting so close to home, because the inner self is, you know, the part of Mabma, maybe, you know, or, 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 or just, you know, the, the inner wisdom in you saying, you need to change. I don't need to change. And it's not my fault. It's everybody else's fault. You know, it's like you start to rage against that good message that's coming in you. The tension is building, you know. Thank you, therapist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't started the therapy yet right now. Lie down and <laughs> get started. A All team right. of people come in, flown in from Austria. Yeah, that's your <laughs> your standard Seinfeld <laughs> shtick, Roganath. Let's okay, All right. hit it. Mantras. Narayanam namaskitya naram chayavanarotamam devim saraswatim vyasam tojayam mudirey. Before we start in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one mm -hmm. should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, to Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta prayeshva badreshu nityam bhagavat sevaya bhagavati tumashloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki. By regular attendance and classes in the Bhagavatam, and by rendering service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated. And loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, will be established as an irrevocable fact. 
ओम ज्ञाना तिमरंदस्या ज्ञानंजन शलाकय चक्षुरुन मिलतम येना तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः रीडिंग आई वाज बोर्न इन द डार्कनेस आई वाज बोर्न इन द डार्कनेस ऑफ इग्नोरेंस माय टीचर्स आर आस्क मी टू ओपन माय आईज द टॉर्च साइड ऑफ नॉलेज आई ऑफ माय ओबेसेंसीज एट द लोटस फीट बाय द वे आई जस्ट गॉट अ मैसेज विद द नोट्स फॉर टुडे ओके वी डिड दैट वन कल्ट ऑफ जॉश postural yoga with anu this sunday at 10 a.m for patreon members oh and saturday's off tomorrow's and, oh, yeah, off and tomorrow is off there's no show tomorrow okay how come it seems like no one could get in and then i let everybody in there's only like seven more people live what the hell they all left we're, we're <laughs> out of here okay let's get into it ragnath okay? okay let's focus yep, let's do this let's, let's focus right now stop going to ask you stuff. to okay I good to I, I will good. we're 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 reading today from the shrimad bhagavatam canto 6 chapter 4 which is entitled the hamsa guya prayers offered to the lord by prajapati daksha and we're at text 14 right where the yeah. prachetas have come out of the water they saw tons of trees they've been doing all this austerity they're ready to take and take charge but like dharmically right to 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 perform dharma to protect the citizens so but they see what do they see ragna they see lord shiva no oh god you're not even trying to you know what i'm doing you're i'm trying to space to... out it's just a focus no, not man space, i'm i'm trying to pull up the bhagavatam i'm in All a right. car i had a blackout last <laughs> night i'm i'm i've got five people in the car with me we're struggling here okay. try my best all right all right forgive tolerance yeah. tolerance and free yourself from anger not i'm not having gotten angry i'm a little frustrated though I'll be honest. Okay, what chapter are we on? Four. Chapter four. There was a tree down on my road. I had to go a whole different way. Come to on, get let's get into this. Enough. Station. Enough. Okay. What text number? Fourteen. So this is Soma, the god of the moon, speaking to the Bachetas. They're being too destructive in their anger, right? They're burning down all the trees. Like whoa, whoa, whoa! This is the kind of thing you're going to regret, right? It starts with yeah. folly. It ends with, with remorse or regret or whatever. Yeah. So the 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 moon god Soma comes he's speaking to them in, in the previous text 13 which is a great one he said you know um super souls in the core the heart of every living being try mm-hmm. to see the super soul in everyone and act according to that vision right yeah consider every body to be a, a temple of god and by that vision you'll satisfy god uh, so stop all this killing out of anger that you're doing now text 14 Text fourteen: One who inquires into self-realization and thus subdues his powerful anger, which awakens suddenly in the body as if falling from the sky, right? Yeah. Transcends the influence of the modes of material nature. One who inquires into self-realization and thus subdues powerful anger. You see it all the time. Road rage. Yeah. It's just like it comes down from out of nowhere. It comes down. Yeah. Every frustrating thing in the person's life. manifest in one moment when someone cuts you off road rage it's it's got nothing to do with that person cutting you off it's a thousand other things that i haven't mitigated by imbibing spiritual information inquiry into self realization hmm. let let's read the the commentary here on four, um, 14 yeah okay i also follow road rage hashtags by the way mm-hmm. when one becomes angry he forgets himself and his situation but if one is able to consider his situation by knowledge one transcends the influence of the modes of material nature now what is his knowledge right it, the, in one sense when someone from the tradition uses the word knowledge generally they're using it in a very specific sense right gyana right, right. That, so what that implies is the consideration i'm not my body i'm not my mind the consideration that karma is in effect here if something's coming my way I I I own responsibility for it not just this idiot who's driving in some way that I'm not appreciating right mm-hmm. if if um you know think reflecting on that kind of thing uh, you know on, on how the modes of nature are controlling us and making us act different ways you know on, on recognizing that underneath my mind is my soul which is is, is blissful by nature and it's only this anger is just is just something going on on the screen of my mind something it's not me right um it, this is that's called knowledge right that this that is, kind of 
thinking in that sense. So why don't you start it again and we'll these these purports are good. Yeah. When one becomes angry, he forgets himself and his situation. Boom. But if one is able to consider his situation by knowledge, one transcends the influences, mm. the influence of the modes of material nature. Consider that means reflecting on the knowledge. Consider it. Not right? a, this is, this is not a religious thing. Every this is for everybody. Yeah, everybody. This is information for everybody. It's timeless. It's cross cultural. It's over all religious universal systems. It's universal. It's apolitical. Yeah. When one is always a one is always a servant of lusty desires, My anger, attachments, greed, right? illusion, envy, and so forth. But if one obtains sufficient strength and spiritual advancement, one can control them. This is what I love about these things: the original pollutants of the living entity. We're worried about these pollutants and if this is organic and if this is, you know, uh, locally grown and stuff. Yeah, I understand. There's a lot of pollutants in the world and we would like to go back to Eden, back to this time where everything was pristine. Guess what? In Calayuga, it wasn't pristine. In Calayuga, the soul, the pure spirit soul, the Eden type of soul has always been covered by these 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 pollutants. Right. Mm, yeah. Kama, Krota, Loba, Moga. Always there. So we've got to get back to the garden, you're saying. Get to the Garden of Eden. Get to the Garden of Eden by uncovering those things. It, and it, it doesn't matter. Also, it doesn't matter how organic your life is and how you use non-toxic, um, you know, uh, uh, kitchen, kitchen cleaner or, you know, <laughs> natural soaps, biodegradable soaps. Not that we're against that. Not that we're against it. We love um, Dr. Bronner's soap. But but if we don't clean up the inside, then we're going to continue to to pollute the outside. Right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. And this is what we have to do. And the, this this anger. Take Calm, note. Calm, crowed, it's, it's lobe. Saying, it's saying take note of these pollutants. One who obtains such control will mm -hmm. always be transcendentally situated, untouched by the modes of material nature. Okay, so transcending the modes of material nature is so much about what yoga is all about. The last verse of the Yoga Sutra is saying, you know, when the modes just kind of say, okay, you're free now, then you've achieved the goal of yoga, right? Mm -hmm. Now, now, but when Prabhupada speaks about transcending the modes of nature, he says, what does Krishna say about that? What right. does Krishna say about transcending the modes of nature? And there's several verses from the Bhagavad Gita they'll go to, but always he's going to say to really transcend these modes, and the anger and greed and illusion and envy and all that that is um, generated by the modes. To really do it, bhakti is the way. Devotional service is the way. And he'll quote Krishna. You know, uh, he could have quoted seven fourteen here. He quotes fourteen twenty six. This is a great. This is a great verse. You want to get so rid says, of the modes? Yeah. We got you covered. Here it is. So he says, "This is only possible." Read that intro. Yeah. Uh, Why don't you go back to one who obtains such control? One who obtains such control will always be transcendentally situated, untouched by the gunas, the modes of material nature. This is only possible when one fully engages in the service of the Lord. As the Lord says in the Bhagavad Gita 1426, I wonder if uh, Karuna knows that one. Karuna, let us know. If I you bet know she does. One. That's a winner. Let us know I'm going to get the kid back on the game. Karuna set such a high bar for raising... Karina's parents have set such a high bar for raising kids. Yeah, 100 like It makes slopes. the rest of us, makes the rest of us feel like uh, these derelict absentee parents. <laughs> did, did, did you see Karina? She does, Karuna's... but she's not here. Oh, she knows, well, it, but she's not here. Did you see her on the board yesterday? What'd she do? Oh, she was shaming me. She didn't mean to, but she was. She was going, actually, you should learn the Sanskrit properly. It's oh, like imagine if imagine if you go to someone's angry? birthday. Imagine if you come to someone's birthday party and you start just started saying "Happy boy, di do ya." But that's what she said. That's what the analogy she gave on the message board. Like, wow. okay, you're into this. You appreciate me to so learn the words from the mouths of babes, Roguna. From the mouths of babes, I was corrected. <laughs> Her mother's saying that she corrects corrects the parents also. Oh, she good. Okay, good. Okay, so what's the translation of that verse? Don't get too proud, 10-year-old. <laughs> what's that? What's that trans He's getting angry. He's getting angry. <laughs> when, okay, so the, 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 the translation of that verse is, one who engages in full devotional service 
Yeah, so Buck that means twenty four seven. Buck to Yogi and Savate, right? Yeah, that's what we're working on. Our morning sadhana, our evening sadhana. We are working on having Krishna going through our mind, not on Sundays for an hour and fifteen minutes, and then donuts. It's all day long, or not during you know, uh, in a Friday night. Uh, pizza. <laughs> no, donuts it's, it's, on Sunday. Shab- pizza on Shabbat, Friday night. Shabbat. Yeah. Or, you know. You know. Uh, Oh, I see what you're saying. I mean, not just like the religious things. A little time we get together, we have some religious functions. No, it's a sp- our it's our spiritual life, and it's twenty four seven. Okay, not just in the morning time when we, you know, this class is supposed to meant to keep going throughout the course of the day. So when we have this twenty four seven going through our consciousness, we have transcended the modes. Hmm. One who engages in full devotional service. Who does not fall down in any circumstance always at once transcends the modes of material nature and thus comes to a spiritual platform. Nothing bothers them. If I say, hey, you got a million bucks. OK. okay. Hey, you lost a million bucks. OK. Oh. It's like they're not they're not disturbed by what comes and goes. They're not disturbed or elated by the stuff of the material world. You know who's like that? Who? Oh. You're like that. Oh, come you're on. like that a lot. Kostuba. I'm not one of those people that's really like that. I'm a little bit. Like I remember that. when everything was falling apart in 2020 and I was like, <laughs> I was I'm losing my out. mind. <laughs> I was losing my mind. I was like, OK, um, everything's upset. The kids are out of school. Everybody's wearing masks. You know, we can't. How do you go to the supermarket? I'm scared to see people in the supermarket. Um, you know, I. I uh, I bought a bunch of ammunition in case we get overtaken by the farm. I bought a few guns. <laughs> I did. Um, you know, did you, I'm, did, I'm, did I'm, answer I'm, me this right now. Did you stock up on toilet paper? Please tell me no. I stocked up on everything. Are you kidding? <laughs> right. Toilet paper? I got like barrels of rice in my basement. <laughs> Rice and beans. <laughs> Rice and beans. I, you know, get my water filters, everything. I, I was so ready for the apocalypse. Um, anyway, um, my point was, and, and then remember going through the supermarket. Don't look at anybody. Don't talk to anybody. Even if you know them, don't look at them. You know, and you got to walk down the aisles one direction and then walk down the other. It was so the out first, of control. The first days of it were really crazy. I remember I was, was crazy, creepy. And the, the, those first couple days where it's like everyone it just started. Everyone started locking it. I remember I, I went out on a walk and every place was closed and I had to go to the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom in the park, you know, like they have like those park oh, bathrooms. Okay. I Not just anywhere would, in the park. I thought you did what I did this morning because of the blackout. I went into the woods. Right. And I, I bathed and but but I just remember there's there are two people in that bathroom. When I walked in there, they just it was almost like one of those films where like everybody's totally freaking out. It's like they just they just looked at me with wide eyes and like backed off and like it, like like I was totally you know, it was like some futuristic thing. It was a futuristic it, it, it got uh, wild there, yeah. It got wild. And you know what was another thing? In the yoga community, when it first happened. All these yoga teachers were like, "We'll just we're we're gonna give yoga for free to everybody." And because I'm That's a yoga, I was a do. yoga studio <laughs> owner. I was like, "You're gonna put us out of business, you assholes!" R- Rokanath, sorry, 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 that was that was angry. I was like, <laughs> I was losing my mind. I was, I, 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 we lost our yoga studio. I lost my, you know, lost my family during that one. I, I was, and I was afraid I was gonna lose our property and our cars and everything. It was it was so crazy. And I was like, Kostuba, I'm losing my mind here. You're losing like, your mind. These are all gonna work out. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna work. It's gonna get, we're gonna get through this. <laughs> and George Floyd happened. I was like, oh, George Floyd happened. We gotta say something about this. I, I, I was like, uh, and you're like, you know, yeah, these things happen. They go up and down. And anyway, <laughs> um, in any case, <laughs> two shows without Mara, and you're using vulgarities. Organizing. We gotta get that. That was you. very bad. That was, was very vulgar. Was it a bad one? Yeah, that was a bad one. Sorry about that. If you're under eleven, okay. now let's Sorry. complete this. Let's complete the the uh, the purport. Okay, so that's the verse. By engaging one in devotional service, the Krishna conscious movement. Oh yeah, we're part of a movement. You didn't know that, did you? If you're listening to this show, you are part of a movement of transcendentalizing the universe. Okay. Uh. Keeps one always transcendental to anger, greed, lust, envy, and so forth. It really works. Okay. 
One must perform devotional service because otherwise one will become victimized by the modes of material nature. So true. Mm. Become victimized. I was a victim. It wasn't me. It was the modes. <laughs> <laughs> Ever do that one? Hey, it wasn't me. All right. Okay, so uh, let's continue with what Soma has to say. Text 15. Text 15. Um, there is no need to burn these poor trees any longer. Let whatever trees still remain be happy. Uh, there's nothing better than a happy tree. Indeed, you should also be happy. Now, here is a beautiful, well-qualified girl named Marissa. Who could make what? you more happy than that? <laughs> <laughs> Ma Marissa. It sounds like she's an Marisha. Italian Marisha. 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 One who the was raised... Hey, Marissa, ciao. <laughs> okay, so... Who, who was raised by the trees as their daughter. Oh, okay. Marissa, so, daughter of the trees. This is like one of those intermarriage things, like where like one kingdom would marry the children to each other to build a bond. Right. You know? Right. Now we just marry anybody randomly. <laughs> you don't want to arrange... There's no marriage. sense of a bigger picture. Well, if my family aligns with your family, then that'll be prosperous for the entire clan, both clans. <laughs> <laughs> no one does that anymore. We're to meet the match.com. What's their clan like? Uh, I don't think they have one. <laughs> then why are you marrying them without a clan? <laughs> why would you marry into a non clan? Much, You're so how much vulnerable. Cattle do they have? Do they have cattle? <laughs> no, no cattle. We've got a dog. Land? We've got, they've got no, no land, no cattle. How about grains? Do they have grains <laughs> or foodstuffs? <laughs> a burk, a burk. What is this called? A no, I just, I just burkey? think he's cute. <laughs> what? I think, he's, I think he's cute. <laughs> what? That, like cuteness is the last thing you marry <laughs> someone. The last for. consideration. Nice legs, so I married her. <laughs> what? Did you do a chart? No, I just checked out her legs. It's ridiculous. Uh, what kind of world do we live in? It's, okay, so so crazy. Soma, Soma is arranging a marriage here to to. So that both the trees as well as the humans will come together and live in harmony. So uh, Marisha, he says, here's this beautiful, well-qualified girl, Marisha. She was raised by the trees. Who That's pretty cool. Right she now. must have been like jungle woman. And uh, as their daughter. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and they say, you may accept this beautiful girl as your wife. Do you think she had any say in it, Rogana? Hopefully uh, she no. did. She I, I probably it. she was probably thrilled about it though i mean she, they're uh, really a beautiful talented yogis and i mean she was probably lonely living in the woods we don't know that. like who what are her options bears <laughs> gorillas uh, uh, here's a oak you can marry the oak <laughs> you can marry an oak <laughs> tree a uh, a uh, weeping willow <laughs> or these 10 beautiful yogis that just came out of the water <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Krishna. Text 16. Text 16. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Here we go. Read a few Sudhadeva more. Swami continued, My dear king, after thus pacifying the Prachetas, Soma, the king of the moon, gave <laughs> king of the moon. That's so funny. Gave them the beautiful girl born of Pramlocha. Apsara. So the Apsaras are like okay. like heavenly bigs or like angels, what we, yeah. what we would call angels. I think she was raised by the trees, but um, she was but abandoned. She wasn't. You know, I think this society girl <laughs> from Locha, right? <laughs> society the society girl from the heavens. You know, they, they're they used to not taking responsibility for their offspring. These They kind of grow up quickly. Oh. So she just left that and was raised by the trees. The girl was raised by the trees, but she was born of this beautiful heavenly damsel. The Prachetas all received Pramlocha's daughter who had high, very beautiful hips. Must have been extraordinary. Extraordinary. That means long legs, high hips, high. Absolutely. How do you get high hips without long legs? <laughs> right? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's referring to the, 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 that the trunk thing. of her body. Um, Yes. Anyway, I won't get into details. Just keep reading. <laughs> right. And married her according to the religious system. What That's the how they got married. What does that mean? I guess. Yeah, in the womb the of that girl, 
all the Brachetas got a son. Begot. Begot a son. Wait a second. There's 10 Brachetas, right? I think there's 10. I'm not sure. Or is there 100? No, 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 no. They all gave birth. They Don't all... worry about it, Ruggenaut. Don't worry about it. Just You're let saying it go. this is beyond my conception. It's not. This isn't. That. We're used to a simple way of reproducing. They had other ways. Okay. Okay. I, I can I can accept that. I'm just wanting to know if you had some insight. And your insight think. is it's beyond our insight. This, yeah, that's that's okay. my point. In the womb <laughs> yeah, of that exactly. girl, the Prochetas all begot a son. It sounds like they all have a son named, and they all chose to name it the same name. Daksha. Maybe they did. They did. They got together and they named it Daksha. Okay. Who fill the three worlds with living entities? So Daksha is one of these progenitors, and it was from this from. And from now he's come son. back, right? Because he's, he's back again. That... Daksha's back. What did? Where did we last see Daksha? Daksha's got his head cut off. He got a little proud. They cut off his head. They replaced it with the head of Not a. Not just proud. He got offensive. He offended Lord Shiva, and then he offended his yes. own daughter. Yeah. And his daughter so... took her own life. The and ceremony broke Shiva, into chaos. Lord Shiva pulled out one of his dreadlocks no, threw it on the ground no you're mixing things up lord shiva didn't even huh. go to the event right his daughter went with all of shiva's uh cohorts you could say when did lord shiva pull out his dreadlock that was that, then, oh, that's right? a whole nother thing raganath lord shiva he got insulted and he didn't say anything he was just cool-headed then his wife sati said i want to go to this uh my father's got a big event going on i want to go she was like i don't think it's a good idea He's he's got had nothing good to say about me, but in any right. case, if you want to go, I'm not going to tell you not to go. If you you know, so she went without Shiva, but her father just because she hates Shiva so much, she was like, I can't even. You're not even looking at me, talking to me. What's the matter with you? I don't even want to be associated with you. I don't want to be in a body that was born of you. And she sat down, and she uh, spontaneous internal combustion. She just let her set herself on fire through yoga and then the whole scene broke into chaos where lord shiva's followers were just tearing the place up and they got daksha and they cut his head off all right yeah they cut then everyone head. had to apologize lord yeah, shiva was... forgave them and daksha received the head of a goat but he couldn't handle that he gave up that body eventually and now he's taking birth in a future age Maybe and, you should have preached to Daksha. Just be tolerant. So you got a goat's head. Big deal. It must be very awkward walking around with a goat's it's head. It's very awkward. Hi, I'd like a grande. Uh, <laughs> with, You're a goat. Uh, with oat milk. <laughs> with oat milk. <laughs> Imagine just having to live life with a head of a goat. <laughs> Did you say with oat milk or with goat milk? <laughs> I said oat milk, but that would have been funny too. Yeah. It, it's hard. And then be all these movements about it. People with goat heads are equal. We should treat them. You're, you're, okay. In any case, he couldn't handle it. He's now he's taking birth in a much future age. It's actually, I think it's like the fifth Munvantar that he takes birth in now. So it's like maybe millions of years later, but still there's pro, uh, progeny that needs to be take, made mm. within the universe. Okay. So read the next couple of verses. Okay. By the way, somebody, Nityananda Chandra, somebody put on the message board when Shiva pulled that hair out of his head. And made Virabhadra appear. Okay. In the womb of the goat, because I'm getting I'm getting Shastra shamed by Kastuba right now. In the womb, that girl, the <laughs> Pachet. Okay, next next verse. Okay, 18. This is 18. Sukadeka Swami continued. Please hear from me with great attention how Prajapati Daksha, who was very affectionate to his daughters, created different types of living entities through his semen and through his mind. So oh, the old boys. school way of appropriation was semen. Mm -hmm. uh, but the or the old old way old way was maybe that's the new modern way. <laughs> way is, the <laughs> yeah. old school way is through mind. Okay, imagine that. You'd need to it's use nice your to mind. think about things like that. You use your mind, and then baby comes out of your mind. You oh. know. Okay. Next, nineteen. With his mind, Prajapati Daksha first created all kinds of demigods, demons. Human beings, birds, beasts, aquatics, and so on. This Maybe. makes sense. So he's not actually, it's, it's not like a, a vaginal birth. He's creating them with his consciousness. And so think about all the difference. It makes sense. It, it makes, makes sense. sense. It makes perfect sense. There may, you know what doesn't make sense? What came first, the chicken or the egg? There's no good answer for that. 
being born of right Rognath, we're out of time but i just want to read a few more verses i know this okay. nothing fascinates you more than than <laughs> mental procreation i know that it's the topic I, i really what i'm trying to do is mental get rid of it now so that we won't spend a whole show on it next week but when prajapati doxa saw that he was not properly generating all kinds of living entities he approached a mountain near the Vindhya mountain range, and there he executed very difficult austerities. Okay. Near that mountain range, it's a very holy place named Agamarshana. The Prajapati Daksha executed ritualistic ceremonies and satisfied the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, by engaging in great austerities to please him. One more. My dear king, I shall fully explain to you the Hamsaguya prayers, which were offered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Daksha. I shall I'll now explain how the Lord was pleased with him for those prayers. Okay, so okay, we we got some takeaways. Okay, we're, Cliff, we're cliffhanger, cliffhanger though. We we'll come back uh, next Monday and we'll we'll do the Hamsaguya prayers. Yes, and look who's it's Lori here. Pag. It's Lori Pag. What are our takeaways, Lori? Anger is an acid. Anger oh yeah, is an acid. A, a destructive one, a, a, a toxic one. Anger clouds perception of God. It does. Yep. Anger <laughs> is a hindrance to evolution. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is good. To become deeply spiritual and loving, you must regulate anger. All right. Her, uh, Lori Pag and Mara need a good pillow fight today. Get the anger we out. are trying to become a sage of steady mind, free, f- free from attachment, fear, and anger. Yeah. She's a very good note taker. Yeah. Two things a person should never be angry at, what you can change and what you can't change. Thank you, this is, These are good takeaways. These are good. Well, we had a good show, too. I'm not going to give her all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> don't replace Mara. Don't vote Mara off the island. I don't want Mara's job. <laughs> one, one, who, one who angers you conquers you. Yep. Ooh. Anger begins with folly and ends with repentance. Mm-hmm. These Anger, are all the nuggets. The nuggets, well, are you're just nuggets carrying the nuggets just, over into the takeaway. You're, you're just re-saying the nuggets. Anger is a wind which blows out the intelligence. There we the go. Oh, lucky. Last, the last okay. nugget, and then I will do the other takeaways. Speak oh, hold on. This is the last angry. one? Like, and? No, no, Okay, no, there's one more. Still left. Okay. Speak when you are angry, and you will make the best speech you will ever regret. That's right. And then... From and? the purports, not yet. Oh, Get not yet. to the Garden of Eden by uncovering the pollutants. I yeah. set you up with a song there, Rogan. You didn't even catch on. I said, oh, so we have to get ourselves back to the garden? And then you just, you I didn't don't know it. Crosby Bhakti, still in there. Full devotional service helps one transcend the modes of nature. Okay. And? Almost. Imagine <laughs> using your mind to have a baby. Yeah, imagine imagine that, right? that. That's a real thing. And imagine all the people born from Rogu's mind. You who who would they look like? <laughs> With all of alone the people. <laughs> no, that's and... a totally different song, right? <laughs> yeah. Being an ostrich is not the answer. Ooh. That's right, right. Ooh. Don't hide your head like that. What there about Plato? There's nothing about Plato being our would Plato hang with us. Play with Plato. Play with Plato. Get the Play-Doh Fun Factory. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Remember the Play-Doh Fun Factory? You put the guy's head in and hair comes out of his head? That was so great. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We're going to miss Mara. She'll be back, but not tomorrow because the show's canceled. Not canceled. It's paused tomorrow. And we're back on Sunday for Q&A with live, live Q&A oh, yeah. because me and Miss Lori Pag are doing a retreat here at Super Soul Farm if the electricity goes back on. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Remember, you got to go to Apple Podcasts and leave two reviews. One for Wisdom of the Sages. Five stars only. We're only accepting five stars. If you hit one by mistake, which I've done by mistake for things like this, it will like register your one chance as a one and you will ruin the uh, everyone's like rankings. So make sure you hit five, not one. And then yeah. you got to write a review. And you got to write, write a, a nice, review. nice review. Yeah, a nice review. And you got to do that for uh, Bhakti Recovery Group as well. You got that, people? You got Someone that, wrote people? a really nice one recently, Raghunath. I sent it what? to you. I don't know if you read Those it. Those Sages? Yeah. 
They wrote a really uh, nice I, I Apple. I filed it with all your other messages you sent me. I know. I sent there. No, I just, just kidding. I read it. It was oh, really yeah. nice. Was that a nice one? Yeah. If you didn't write one, I think you're only allowed to write one. I'm not yeah, positive. I don't think you should write more than one. But I don't think you can. Yeah, you can't stuff the ballot box with like. Unless maybe you go to another browser. <laughs> another username, perhaps. <laughs> another computer from like the library on every computer. I love this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> then These go to like th- then I you go like to Best Rock- Buy. I love the Raghu guy. He's clever. <laughs> <laughs> you probably do that. You're probably responsible for half our reviews. 